um, since Nebojša has already introduced me, uh, I will start straight away. Uh, today we will be looking mostly at Enable Insight, which is uh, a fairly complete solution, uh, especially for MSPs who are just starting or who want a simple and integrated solution. Simple not in terms of capability, but uh, generally in terms of setup times and usage. So we will have a short presentation and then we will jump into a demo. So just to give you an overview, uh, the Insight is a fairly new offering. It consists of remote monitoring and management, which was formerly enable RMM. Now it's Insight RMM. Uh, you also get a license of take control, which is remote access, and uh, you get MSP manager to top it off. And uh, with these three tools integrated, you have all the basic tools you need. So just to give a quick overview of Enable RMM, uh, it's a cloud-based solution purely, uh, which again is quite a simplification because you don't have to set anything up on premise. Uh, you can do almost anything you need uh, in terms of monitoring and management. And of course, uh, tie in some automation to save some work. Uh, you can monitor either predefined parameters that are all ready for you when you first log in, or you can create your own uh, that can be anything from custom services, uh, SNMP checks, either to computer servers or network devices, or you can create scripts, which will give you a certain return and monitor those. Uh, you also have uh, available an automation manager, which is a graphical tool for script creation. You have a drag and drop interface where you can create any script you need, export it as PowerShell and import into RMM and use either for monitoring or as an automated task. Uh, checks are either 24 seven, that would be for things like checking if a service is running and daily. And that's usually used for things like space on each drive on the PC and uh, let's say critical events, whatever else you might need. Uh, you can get asset tracking for both hardware and software. Uh, it's part of the basic license and uh, you can even add purely asset tracked devices uh, without consuming a license. And uh, you have a nice dashboard overview for most of your needs. Uh, since it's management, you also get patch management for all the major operating systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, and uh, there's also third-party software. Uh, there's another batch of third-party software incoming this month. So it's always growing what you can patch. And uh, of course you can generate reports either for yourself to get an overview or for the end users to show you your value. Uh, and you have uh, remote access included in the basic license for all the devices that you are monitoring. Uh, there's also a lot of plugins and integrations, either antivirus or EDR, backup, web filter, or NetPath. And we will look at most of them, uh, except backup and web filter, those are, those are kind of self-explanatory. Next up is take control. And you might ask, why do I need take control if I have remote access in RMM? And the answer is uh, for remote connections to devices that are not under RMM. Either you have a different contract with some customers where you don't provide the proactive solution where you monitor and manage everything and you just fix their problems. You might also want to add a new customer uh, they have some urgent issue and uh, you need to solve it for them or you just need to implement something for them. 
even when you need to install RMM agents, you can do that through take control standalone, and then you will have them in your central management. Uh, you will get an overview of uh, remote support requests. So if there's a customer that's purely support based for you, so not proactive, you can install agents for them and they can send you support requests. Uh, there's automatic queuing if there's not enough technicians and uh, you can get widgets for your website and chat both in session and outside of it. So if you are just uh, in the console, uh, the user can send you a message asking what to do with something. And if it needs your attention, you can then connect or solve it just through chat. And the last part is MSP manager. Uh, primarily, it's a ticketing system, but uh, of course, it's got more capabilities than that. Uh, you can get a nice time tracking solution in it. Uh, you can track time you spent on solving individual tickets. You can plan appointments, and uh, it's got a very nice mobile app where you can also plan travel times to different customers and so on. You can get uh, the basis for your invoicing from there because you can track time. You can also set up a different service rate for the different kinds of issues and uh, run a report at the end of each month that will show this customer required this much support at this rate. And based on that, you can invoice them. And uh, of course, since it's integrated, it will sync customers and all their sites, devices, all the info you need from RMM. And if there's an issue that RMM monitoring finds, it will automatically create a ticket and alert you if that's the way you want to go or if you don't have a automatic process for remediation setup. Uh, as I mentioned, here's a look at the mobile app. You have the time tracking where you can have multiple timers uh, set up and just switch between them as you work throughout the day. You can get a nice map showing uh, where all the customers are located and so you can have a nice schedule right in the same application so you can plan easily. So in summary, uh, the main advantage of Ensite as your RMM is you have access to everything you need, management, and of course, security solutions, automation and monitoring tied together, and tracking, reporting, and invoicing of all your work. So next up, we will take a look at how the solutions actually look. And for that, I will just share my other screen. So you should be able to see the RMM dashboard. That's the first, first thing that you will see when you log in. And uh, in the dashboard, you will have an overview of your devices. Uh, on the left here, you have all your customers and all their sites. Uh, you can divide as you want. You can have uh, sites based on either physical locations or even split it by VLANs. And uh, then under each customer, you will see all your devices here. If you want to add a new customer, it's fairly quick. You just click Add Client and you set up the name. Uh, you set up the time zone, so here we can go through test, and uh, you can allow the client to have a view-only access to the dashboards and allow the customer different levels of permissions. And of course, if you don't want to do that, that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, next up, you can set up uh, software licensing so you will create a list of software that's uh, under volume licensing and the asset tracking will look in the network and see on each device whether that software is installed 
And uh, if there's an installation that would exceed the limit, it will, of course, alert you. Uh, next up, you can send daily, weekly, or monthly reports, and you can set uh, the primary mail and CCs, and whether it will be automatically sent or whether you have to confirm it. And the same thing for workstation as servers. And next up is just notes report. So if you are adding notes for different devices, let's say in order to show what you've been doing on them, uh, you can do that and you can send executive summary, which is mostly for the leadership of your customer company. And they will have a general overview of what was happening there. Of course, not too detailed, not too detailed in order not to confuse them. Uh, besides the device overview, you have uh, other dashboards. So the primary one here is the overview. You see how many devices you have here, how many of them have some issues. And each of these is interactive. So you click on problem devices and you see which checks they are failing and so on. Uh, to continue with the dashboard, uh, you see which devices are failing daily checks and which are failing 27, 24 seven checks, uh, server and workstation status, uh, devices, whether they are monitored on or not, whether you are monitoring uh, all the devices in your customer's networks and overview of just what type of device is present, what's the OS, uh, last reboot time if there's something that's running suspiciously long, and then patch management, antivirus, backup, and web protection install status. Uh, then you have quick overviews of both monitored and unmonitored devices and active issues. So you can see all the checks that are failing regardless of the device and work on them one by one if it's needed. You can set up filters here that will allow you to quickly select a group of devices, of course, saving the filters. And Next thing we are going to look at is NetPath. It is actually one of the plugins, but uh, it's very easy to use. You just click create a new path, uh, select a device from which the path will be taken. So in this case, I will select the online device and I will put in the host name or IP address and port, which I want to monitor. Uh, alias if there's an alternative name and probe interval so how often it will be checked and then the status status thresholds so you can click custom and set a latency and uh, packet loss thresholds at which it will warn you and at which it will be considered critical when you set that up uh, like i have here you can click the path and you will have an overview of not only the latency and uh, packet loss and how it was evolving over time, but you will also see what points are there on the way. So we will be tying a little bit into other presentations here because I am monitoring a web page, which as you can see is behind Cloudflare. And you see here is the desktop, which we are using for monitoring. Here is the router. It's just a cable away, so it's zero milliseconds or under one. Then there's providers gateway, which is at four milliseconds. And then there are two failover paths to the Cloudflare node and then here we can see that there's uh, options for the end server that's serving us the data on HTTPS in this case. A very useful feature if you are either offering some web services or any cloud-based services really, or if the customer is reliant on any of these. So for example, if they are using Office 365, 
uh, you can set up monitoring for that. And if they report you an issue, you will look into NetPath and see, okay, Office 365 is running and uh, the device is obviously running because we see it here, but the providers got some packet loss, so we'll solve it with them. So a nice tool for diagnosis. Next part of RMM is asset tracking. As I said, uh, you can use it even standalone without monitoring, without consuming a license. Uh, you can filter your devices here and have a nice overview of hardware and software. And uh, to really give you a nice, uh, nice asset tracking functionality, you can run a report. And so the most useful probably is modification report. So if there's any changes in hardware or software over the set period, you will see them here. Um, the last overview is wall chart. That's uh, fairly simple. You can open it in a new window. And the reason why you would do that is just to put it on another monitor. Let's say a TV hanging in your technician's room. So whenever there is a new issue, it will pop up on the wall chart and they will see it. And uh, when somebody takes it, so it's assigned to a technician or it's marked as solved or ignored because it's a false positive or whatever, uh, it will again disappear from here. So it's going to have a really nice overview value for you. Uh, I will just shortly uh, mention endpoint detection and response. It's got an engine from Sentinel-1, which is uh, leading in uh, detection rates and also analysis. But uh, we can take a deeper look into that on another webinar or Technical Academy next year. Uh, what I would like to show you next is uh, other parts of the Insight package. So, as I mentioned, besides RMM, you also have the availability of Take Control Plus and MSP Manager. You can open both from here easily. And we'll just have a quick look on Take Control. Uh, here's the dashboard you've seen in the presentation. Uh, you'll see support requests, devices on which you have your agents running, uh, running sessions. If you have multiple technicians, it will give you an overview of current activity and how many technicians are online. Um, in general, uh, it's uh, mostly used either for deployment or uh, customers which are not under full managed service yet. Uh, here you will have an overview of sessions, which you can either create here. So we will create an ID, which will be then shared with customers and they can send you the request. Or uh, you can have uh, quite easily a button here in RMM, where you can directly uh, create a fast assist session so you don't even have to switch to the standalone license and you can just create a session here and work with monitoring. And whenever somebody wants a remote session outside of the monitor devices, you will see a notification in the same dashboard. Uh, besides that, you will have an overview of the devices with the agent. This is uh, not synchronized with RMM as this is just a remote access agent and not for monitoring. But uh, let's see the other settings. Here you have your profile. Under that identification, you will have your uh, name that will be shown, uh, default time zone. You can upload your company logo so you can set up a branding. Uh, the agent can have custom names and so on. So the customers don't even need to see that you are working with Enable. They will see it's your own tool. Uh, you can set up 
the expiration for temporary uh, remote session tools. And you can also set up security, which is fairly useful. You can uh, set up whether technicians need to confirm new devices, will be just notified of new devices, or as long they, as they have both uh, username, password, and their two-factor authentication, they can log in from anywhere. Uh, you can set the admin area IP limitation, so the technicians can access from anywhere, but the admin area is from certain IPs only. Or you can do the same to technician console as well. And last thing in security, you can set up timeouts. So if something is left inactive, it will automatically disconnect. Next up, you can set up email templates. So you can send emails directly from here. And they will have the link to either agent installation or quick support tool, which is not remaining on the device. And you can set up whether session reports will be sent to the customers after you end it. Next is the applet setup. Uh, that's the temporary tool that the customer just starts. You can connect and after they quit it, uh, there's no way you can connect to them again, unless of course they want you to. And uh, it's used again for temporary problem solving, let's say, Customers which are just break fixed don't have any fixed contracts with you. Uh, you can set up the name for the applet, uh, add the department name, and you also have a lot of other options. You can show the customer what position in queue they are, if there's a queue actually. And uh, you can also show them terms of service to accept and create your own here. Uh, you can also force them to fill out an initial form so you have a bit easier job. So if you enable it, they will have to send, let's say, name, email, uh, whatever else you want them. You can create your own fields here and you will get at least an initial problem description from them before you connect. Uh, next up, you can set up your own message if they are waiting for, for a technician, so you can somewhat localize it. And you can set up warnings at certain times. Under the applet, we have the agent. So again, you install the agent on a customer's device and you can connect to them anytime. They can also use the agent, which will be shown in the bottom right to just uh, request a remote session if they need it. And uh, similar settings to the applet, a uh, bit more of a uh, network options. You can use a proxy, you can use custom ports, RDP tunneling, uh, adjust the settings. So if they have slow internet connection, you can uh, limit the data that's being put through. And again, the security settings. Uh, there's also options for APIs. So you can integrate with any other tools you might be using. And there's integration into web pages, uh, exclusive link, which you can set up and then have it, let's say, in your email signature. So when, whenever they have an issue, they can just click on it and uh, request a session. And then you have the settings of email notifications. And last but not least, there's uh, integration with RMM where you can synchronize users. But uh, it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Uh, you can have different teams for RMM and for take control as you will most likely have different customers under there. Then uh, you have the management. Uh, we won't go through all of it. I'll just mention here you can set up technicians. Uh, you can force, of course, two-factor authentication, which I would strongly recommend. Uh, set up permissions for each technician and default settings. Uh, you can split your technicians into different departments. You will have your overview of licenses. You can set up surveys. And one more thing which I would mention is calling cards, uh, which are, again, tools to start the applet 
and uh, quickly provide support from, let's say, your web page, your help desk, or anything else where the customer might go and look if they need your assistance. Uh, you also have the option to create different installers. So you can create different agent versions for each of your customers or device types. And there's a lot of other options. A uh, lot of one more I would mention from the management part is proxies. Um, here under downloads, you have uh, enable proxy and uh, you can use that for Windows devices that are under a restricted network. If they are uh, without access to the internet, you can just set up this proxy in the network on a device that can access it and uh, route the remote sessions through there without giving the actual end users any more access than they had before. And uh, last from Take Control Plus, uh, here you can run reports. So you can have a regular report on session history where you will see all the support sessions that were there. You can run reports on missed sessions. So if there was a user request, but there wasn't anybody available and the user thought, well, I'm not going to wait any longer and did it, you will see it here. And there's also surveys you can set up and then generate summary reports from that. Uh, then let's go on to the third part of Insight, and that is MSP Manager. Again, when you log into MSP Manager, or as I have done it, switch to it from RMM, the first things that you will see are the dashboard overview. You will have uh, overview of the tickets, num tickets that are there completed uh, currently in process and how many hours were spent on them. You will see if there are any overdue due this week and if there are any ticket requests. And you can see overview over longer time, whether it's a day, week, month, year, or your custom time frame. Uh, from the dashboard, you will easily see the ticket overview and timesheet. And uh, besides time tracking of your time spent on the tickets, you can also set up appointments here. And you will see all your planning. You will see it will be in different colors if it's time entry for, let's say, a ticket remediation or if it's an appointment that is planned. Uh, under here, you will have the company dashboard where you don't have an overview of the tickets, but of the company as a whole. So you will see user stats, service utilization, which is how much each customer is using your services and user activity. So you will have an overview of who creates the most tickets. Uh, a very useful feature here is the workspaces. When you open them, for the first time, you will see a screen like this where you can add workspace. If you have created one, you will have a custom overview. For example, here I've got the ticket chart of uh, what's the priority and how many tickets are in there. I will see the ticket queue and ticket requests and of course the open tickets here. You can edit the workspace so you can resize and move anything as you please. And you can also add either new workspace, new page on the workspace. So that will be, uh, that will be shown as soon as I name it here on the top. So I can have a ticket overview here and on page two, I can have, let's see, for example, individual tickets. I can add a widget here and there's many options of what you can set up. But uh, if you don't want to spend all the time there, you can just go to the templates and you will see there's a help desk template, which will show you tickets, requests, queues, archive tickets, and build tickets. 
So as I mentioned in the presentation, you can uh, time track and uh, invoice the customers for whatever work you spent on help helping them. And there's also Geekspace uh, template and operations template where you will have just service items and tickets. Uh, when we close the workspaces, dashboards, uh, one more thing I would mention here is you can zoom in on just individual customers instead of viewing tickets, statistics, and so on for, for your whole MSP organization. And if you add more technicians, you can assign one or two customers to each of them, and they won't have the total overview if that's the way you want to go. Um, next up, there's the help desk view, which again shows a different way, in a different way, your tickets, queues, and schedules. Uh, you will also see the assets here, which are synchronized with RMM by default, and you will have uh, all the informations that you have in RMM here as well. So if you add any notes, for example, if there's some chronic issue, you can have a note of that. You can add any comments you need, or you can also add uh, address for each customer site. So when there's an on-site action required, you can plan that from here and have the routes in the app straight away. Uh, you can set up your knowledge base as well. So if the customer needs help with anything, you don't have to just uh, utilize your technicians. The customer can help themselves through the knowledge base search. But you can also create a, an internal knowledge base, which will uh, show just the technicians some info that you don't want to give to the customer. Um, next up, we have scheduling, where you have appointments. You can quickly add a new appointment and you will see, you can select the technician, a customer, uh, enter the subject. So whatever is going to be the issue, or let's say you can even schedule uh, regular appointments and it will be, for example, consultation, infrastructure check, or whatever else you might need to do on site. And since we are mentioning sites, here's the location. As I mentioned, you can set up an address for each of the locations and you will see it here in the details. And once you save the appointment, it will get sent to your email as an invite as well. So you have it in your email client of choice. Uh, you can set up schedules here as well. So you can title it let's say infrastructure check, a uh, regular business overview with a customer or whatever you need to do. You choose the customer and select the recurrence frequency. So you can have a monthly device check on site to see whether there's not anything wrong that might not be easy to monitor. Uh, let's say someone decided to paint the server room and moved everything around and now there's some issues that might occur at the later day. And you can have a yearly consultation with them as part of your services offered. And uh, one of the last things here is billing. Uh, you have some defaults here whenever you set it up. Uh, you will see the billing period and you can choose different billing period if you want to look backwards. You can create a custom billing period from whatever day you want and add a billing batch, which will run the billing reports for all your customers. So you can easily select all and run billing batch. So in this case, there won't be much to run anyway, but In case you don't want to use the billing, you can also just have the reports um, for customers that would be under fully managed services. You wouldn't usually 
uh, bail them by service hour. It would be all part of a service package. And just to show them that you indeed are useful and worth the money, you can give them a ticket overview, timesheet on how much was spent. And if there's some projects which uh, might include, let's say, new hardware, you can also create an expenses report so you can add that to your service bill. Uh, for your internal use, you can have the customer list export uh, locations and contacts and service item reports. And of course, uh, customer assets as well. Although in this combination of three products, it's uh, almost better, I would say, to run the asset tracking reports from RMM. Uh, if you do use uh, MSP manager for billing as well, you can create a report of uh, billed tickets. So you have an internal business overview ready, and you can also set up service level agreements and run reports on overview of those and tickets that were using service level agreements and whether they were fulfilled. Last, uh, we won't go into much detail here because uh, the settings are pretty full. I will just mention a few things, but uh, first I would mention the company settings. So you can select your time zone, culture, which will set up uh, defaults of tax rate and uh, whatever the currency is. Uh, you can set up time entry rounding. So whether you will invoice by whole hour, 10th quarter or, or half and grace period, which is, let's say you are working an hour and one minute. Uh, you don't want to invoice two hours for that, most likely. So you can set up how long in minutes that will be before you start counting the next hour or half hour. Uh, you can set up the next ticket number here. That's just uh, useful if you want to start uh, after importing things from another help desk. And you can set up your business hours here so they can be shown in the help desk. Uh, again, you have integrations here. So RMM is running by default you can have an integration with Microsoft 365 and QuickBooks or Zero for invoicing, although that's not useful in our regions too much as they don't have the local tax rates and so on. Uh, you can create your own customer portal. So easiest way to use this is to create a subdomain, let's say support.zebra.cz or help.zebra.cz and as a C name, set up whatever you want here, that portal, that msbmanager.com. And that's where customers can start the tickets if they don't want to send them via email or if they want to access a ticket overview. You can set up a company display name, whatever will be shown there, your own logo and primary and accent colors. So, it fits the colors of your logo. And uh, as I mentioned, you can create the SLA policies here. If you want to create a new one, you can name it, describe it, uh, set up alert thresholds. So let's say I want to create a policy for server outages. And uh, you can set up actions for different alert levels. Uh, you can set up notifications, specific users. So let's say on alert two, I want to alert the manager. And at alert one, I want to notify assigned users so they start working on it. If there's alert level three, then I want to notify everybody that this needs to be resolved as soon as possible. There's Default settings you can use. So uh, how quickly the tickets must be assigned, marked in progress, uh, marked complete. So in case of server outages, I would say four hours to complete is a good starting SLA. 
then uh, you can set up these times for different uh, priority levels. And uh, that's all you need for the SLA. Just for a quick overview, you can set up users and permissions. Uh, you can create access groups. So if you have multiple technicians, again, you can assign each of them to just a smaller group. You can set up different roles and set up what access they will have. By default, there's the administrator, which has got uh, permissions for everything, and standard user, which can uh, add things to tickets, uh, view asset management, reporting, uh, create customers, and so on. This will be used for technicians, but again, you can either edit the role, add new, and set up the permissions as you need. Uh, you can group your technicians into different teams, and you can also add user scales, uh, mark them for each user and assign tickets based on these, which is a very useful feature, I would say. And uh, then there are rate templates. So this would be your technician rate for unit time. Or you can set up service plans. So there's different options based on what you need. Uh, there's either a flat fee, so that would be your managed service agreements where you just give them a flat fee each month. There's no changes unless there's uh, expenses for hardware or new software or things like that. Then there can be our retainer where at a discounted rate, the customer just prepays a certain number of hours you can invoice them by hourly or by project. So the last two would be for customers without any contracts. You can set up billing and that can be, for example, for project, it would be best for contract length. For other things, uh, monthly is the standard, but of course you can change that as needed. And you can create different rates and use different SLA policies that will be used for each service uh, each service plan. And once you have set up your service plan, you can save it and be done with it. Um, you can uh, set up Gantt responses, so they can be either automatic in uh, uh, for example, you can have uh, an auto reply. We have accepted your ticket. Thank you for contacting us. A technician with, will be with you shortly. Or you can, uh, let's say, encounter a software issue that's going to be affecting multiple customers. You can create a canned response for that and send it to everybody with just a few clicks instead of even saving it to a text document and uh, copying, pasting for every ticket. Again, in the MSP business, it's uh, about efficiency and saving time. So anything like this can help you. Uh, you can set up routing rules here, which can be for tickets via email, customer portal, or received through RMM. And uh, you can assign by skills, by location or customer assigned users, or by specific user or team, or you can assign it by workload. So the technician that's got the least tickets assigned will get the new one. While there's uh, quite a few other things, I would say uh, we don't need to go through all the details of MSP Manager. I believe I've shown the basics and uh, we can return to RMM and uh, see how you would set up a new customer here and uh, how you can automate your daily tasks. So one of the first, first things I would recommend 
is setting up the templates because it will work uh, save you time in the future. Uh, first thing uh, I would mention is problem monitoring templates. So another tie-in, uh, we've seen Cloudflare before. Now I have uh, a Chronos Protect template here. For example, a template like this will contain uh, custom edit, Acronis monitoring, AV scans through CyberProtect, malware scan, and of course the agent install upon initial setup. When you add a new template, you can select whether it's for monitoring uh, servers or workstations. Uh, you will set up the name, what OS it is for, so whether Windows or Mac, uh, Linux is for server monitoring. You can set up check frequency. There's either the default one or you can set up the 24 seven checks here. And when the daily safety check will be run, or you can just leave it at default. And here you can add custom checks of what you want. Uh, I would just note if it doesn't seem like there's much by default, uh, I can open a workstation here. Let's say this one, everything you see here. So the windows checks, the antivirus check, critical events and so on. That's the default checks. You don't need to set those up in any way. What I would recommend after you create a template, if you do need some custom services monitor there or whatever, uh, is to assign it. So if you click new device installation settings, that would be used whenever you add a new device either in general. So I can have for all workstations use Acronis Protect, but if it's at home, I can set, use a different template or I can set it customer by customer F and have uh, no default one here for all workstations. Or I can choose to open a customer app and set a different default for each site. Uh, when I do do that, I will have the workstation check template, bank workstation check template. And there's also the option to have the check detection scan, uh, which is run when you install the agent. And uh, it will check what services are running, what's the hardware components, whatever is on the device that uh, is considered worth monitoring. And uh, it will add the monitoring checks by default. So once you set up the def defaults, you can do the same for other, other things. For example, you can have uh, patch management. Again, you can create different feature policies for each customer, site, and servers and workstations. When you create a new patch management policy, you can base it on a previous one and see what type it will be. So desktop server or laptop. You have the general settings, uh, patch status, so whether uh, missing patches will be just reported to your dashboard or whether you will be alerted and uh, schedule the patch management patch management checks so either on the same time as the daily checks or you can scan it manually only or have it scheduled for a custom time and custom days of the week then you can set up the approval policy so let's say i want to install all critical Microsoft patches, but uh, important as well. And the rest will be manually done. And when you have the policy set up, you can save it. In this case, I want, and again, go to patch management settings. And just like with the monitoring templates, you can assign a, assign a default template for either everything, each customer or each site. Once you have done that uh, for whatever other things you might want. So for example, managed antivirus. So you have overview in the same place. You can use web protection. So there's uh, either just the malware blocking 
or you can use the web protection as content filtering as well. The advantage is here if uh, the customers have uh, laptops, carry them around, you can't use the content filtering option on your firewall or other network devices as they might connect from home and uh, go wherever they want. In case of content filtering, it's not that important, but uh, at least protection from malicious websites should be available, available whether, wherever the users are in the office or at home. Uh, just to have a look at the patches for each device, you will have an overview of the missing patches here and whatever it's installed. And if you want to install the missing patches, you can either do that manually here, approve, or a quicker way is to go to patch management and management workflow, where you can filter either by client or site, by status, or by device type. So in this case, let's say I want to do my weekly check on workstation patches, apply the filters, see what's available here. So let's say I've got a Firefox patch, TeamViewer and VirtualBox. Uh, I probably don't want to go for preview patches, but it might be good to update the intelligence. I will uncheck this one. You can use shift and control just like you would uh, when, let's say, selecting things in Windows Explorer or whatever, wherever else. So when I go to proceed, I will select approve for these patches. And I will select workstations, every one of those, approve those patches, use existing schedule for installation. And that's that I've just approved all necessary patches for all the devices. Uh, of course, uh, this scales very well because if you keep your environments more or less unified and standardized, uh, you will select patches for just one OS and uh, usually one or two kinds of say, email clients, browsers, and so on. And it will take you around uh, 10 minutes each week, if a lot, and you will have uh, manually approved everything that you need and uh, Windows won't install anything without you approving it. Uh, so that would be the policy and uh, patch management overview. And next thing you might want to see is how to install the agent. There's a few options, but you can either download the agent directly for each OS. And when you install it, set up your login and uh, what site and customer it will be. Or the faster way, uh, download site installation package, where you select which client it is, which site it is, and what OS you want to create the package for. And once you do that, you can set up whether the network uses a proxy server, uh, fill it out if needed. And uh, then it will create the installer. It can sometimes take a minute, but once it does, you have either a group policy installer. So it will be an MSI, which you just put into a group policy and it will get distributed everywhere or you create a remote worker installer, which is a executable file. You can send that to remote workers that wouldn't get the install from the GPO in time. And they will just launch the file and there will be a silent background installation. Once it finishes, uh, the device will pop up in the designated uh, customer and side here and uh, run all the checks you have set up for default. Uh, you can also monitor not just desktop and server devices. You can also check networks as a whole. So you can select here networks, manage a new network, select whatever network is uh, available to devices with agent right now. And 
once you set it up, you can set up the SNMP strings to connect to network devices. And you will, after the initial scan, you will see what's the network, what's the gateway, details like this. You will see all the currently connected devices that your agent is uh, able to see. So in this case, I see there's the device with the actual uh, agent that's scanning the network. There's some other devices. Uh, I can check the MAC address and see 1CF29A is uh, Google. So I know there's a, a home hub in the network. I can name it here. And it's basically a tablet. I can set up whatever I need to do here. So it's Android version if I need to, and manufacturer is Google. Save that. And once I have names of the device, I don't need to fill out the rest, but I can go and monitor the device from here. Uh, once I click that, it will be added here to the network devices. And uh, as you can see, I've already started monitoring the router. Uh, since this is a home network, it's just a basic router. I can ping check it. So I see there's no issues with the network connection to the router. I can also add a SNMP check. So either existing or a new one. Uh, there's a default library here. But uh, easiest way would be to download the MIB and have the checks that way. And uh, last thing you might want to do is at the mobile devices. Again, you can just select the customer, the site, uh, select the device name and send an SMS with a link or send an email with a link to download the agent that will be set up properly. Uh, in case of uh, iOS devices, uh, it will be just a configuration profile. So there's basically native integration and you will have all the mobile device management you need. Now I will switch back to workstations and show a bit about automation. So as I've mentioned before, I've created the Acronis monitoring template here. Uh, you can also just click the device and go to task, add a new one. There's a pre-existing library. Uh, you can choose from that, or you can go to settings, monitoring, uh, sorry, script manager, and you can upload your own script. Uh, you can see here that uh, there's quite a few supported types. You can select whether that's a script check or an automated task and for which OS it is applicable. Name it, set up a description and set up some usage notes if you want and time out for how long the script does have to give you some return. Uh, once you set it up, you will see it here. And if you don't want to write your own scripts, there's two options, either download a automation manager right here or you can just go to Automation Cookbook, uh, which is enables library of scripts. And uh, you can likely find out what you need here. In this case, I was looking for something to clean out Prince Pooler. I have uh, found one right here. I see that this will stop and restart Prince Pooler and there's also one that will also clean up the spool printers. So it might be a better choice. I will just download the script, go back to RMM, upload it here, name it as I want. Um, in this case, I will just skip the description and so on. 
And um, again, I can either add that to a monitoring template or I can add that manually. If I do that here, I will go to task, add, and uh, search here for print. There's no parameters required and I can either run that regularly or I can do that manually. So in this case, the manual is the better way. Uh, I can set maximum execution time. If the script doesn't return that it's finished by then, it will get terminated. And that's it for the setup in case of this particular script. And whenever the customer using this computer uh, calls me that uh, his printer isn't working, I'll just go here and click run. Uh, tell them, wait a minute, try it again. And if it doesn't help, then I will uh, remote in, which I can do right here. Or it will most likely be already fixed with just, uh, let's see, click the device, click tasks, click right, run. So four clicks. Of course, that's kind of a half automation, not a full one. So let's see the other options here. As I already mentioned, you have the monitoring checks. And the easiest way to automate something would be to add a check. In this case, I will select a service. Uh, I know I'm running a test instance of uh, mail, uh, mail server here. So there will be a carrier connect some, somewhere around here, or maybe I've already edited. Yes. And once you add the check, uh, you can set up a pass if it's in start pending mode, that's a service check specific. And you can also right here, click restart if service is stopped and set up how many failures there will be before I receive an alert and how many consecutive restarts before I get an alert. And uh, even if it fixes it automatically, it can reoccur. And I can set up here, if the service is restarted four times in 24 hours, I will get a alert again. And I will have a look at what's the issue there. But it's four times that the service has fallen and uh, I didn't have angry calls from the customers. In case this is not uh, all that you want, you can set up assign a task after editing check. And if the check returns as failed, you can once again add an automated task that will be run every time the check fails. So in this case, uh, it's a mail server, so there's probably no easy fix. But uh, if it's, let's say, a critical event, so there's many failed passwords, I can password attempt logins. I can uh, automatically prompt the user to change the password or whatever. So there's a lesser chance. And again, there's a security option that I didn't have to do anything to enact. And the uh, last option would be to just have something that's running regularly. So in this case, I have a script here that's for daily maintenance. Uh, in the parameters, I can select whether I want to disable RDP. In this case, I don't want to disable it as it's in a secure network. And I can select how often the, check will, uh, the task will be running either daily, monthly, or on some check failure. Again, that would be linking it like before, just from the other uh, tab on the bottom there. And if I select daily, I can select which days, so there won't be anyone working there on Saturday and Sunday. I can select the time, and in this case, I can leave midnight. If somebody turns the computer off overnight, I can select to run task as soon as possible if schedule is missed which it could be at midnight. And once the customer starts the PC in the morning, 
they will start the PC, go make some coffee. And in the meantime, I can look here in the, the script manager. Uh, their PC will flush DNS cache. So there's an issue that can be prevented to disable RDP if I want to set PowerShell to remote sign. So I can run some scripts if I need to enable UAC. So they will get the notification if something's requiring admin privileges. Disables drive auto run. So again, a security option. Uh, disable fast start in case there's something I need to do through BIOS. Enable Windows Smart Screen and um, restart Windows Update Service if it's stopped. And last but not least, sync time to the proper time server. So if they have an old PC that's run out of uh, battery on the motherboard, it resets time. Uh, Kerberos would have some issue when authenticating. So I can prevent that again easily. Uh, that would be, I would say, everything that I wanted to show, but let's see what questions I have. If you want to ask anything, you can go ahead now. Good, good, great. Uh, thank you, Andra. Uh, in a chat I left a few minutes ago, initiative to, that they uh, that participant leave their questions uh, so far no no questions it seems that you did a great job or or not <laughs> um, so uh, if there is no questions i will maybe stop this recording just to have uh, separate recordings for each session